It's a feeling that's flowing like a river Time to swap them dollar signs for dreams There's a river running through what I that flows through I'm John Osborne, broadcasting from Spokane, Washington. We'll start with a discussion of a movie called The Kama. The Kama is a movie about family farmers, dryland wheat farmers in eastern Washington. These are fourth generation farmers. If you go out on their, on their farms, the, the land is rolling. That, that you'll see the houses uh, that are, are scattered uh, across the landscape, and it, it's dry. Um, and uh, the, the water for these homes uh, derives from wells. The wells go down uh, generally about 700 feet. Uh, and, and this is the, the source of water for their homes. It's their drinking water. Certainly, they're not using this water uh, as part of their farming production. Um, the reason that we've been filming this movie uh, called The Kama is that uh, the farmers have become the subject of really horrendous decisions of, in the state of Washington. And uh, the decisions that have really uh, created a chaos in the way in which the state manages groundwater so in, in about 2008, in August, uh, the farmers became aware that there was a, a large corporate feedlot, cattle feedlot, that was proposed amongst their farms. This is um, an operation uh, called Easter Day Ranches. And, and really the kind of the fix was in almost from the beginning. Uh, the county government um, uh, notified them late. Um, they were really forced. They were on the defensive almost from really almost from the very beginning. Uh, they called up uh, the Center for Environmental Law and Policy, um, Rachel Osborne, uh, and uh, sought help. And so, with the help. Uh, of uh, public interest water lawyers, uh, including Jeanette Brimmer uh, with Earth Justice and Kristen Boyle uh, also with Earth Justice. Uh, these farmers really went on a long journey of trying to protect uh, their drinking water. And um, the, the movie is called The Kama because the device by which Easter Day uh, claimed water was um, a reinterpretation of a 60-year-old statute by the Attorney General Rob McKenna. Uh, and what uh, McKenna did was he looked at the law and he says, you know, because of uh, the absence of a comma, these uh, large corporate feedlots can have unlimited amounts of groundwater. So that statute, which was passed in 1945, uh, provided a small rural farmers with up to 5,000 gallons per day uh, for their household use and also for stock. But certainly it was never envisioned and never interpreted for 60 years uh, that the amount of water available to stock operations, these large corporate uh, factory feedlots would be unlimited. But that's what Rob McKenna did when he reinterpreted that 1945 statute. So in, in, in so doing, um, McKenna opened the groundwaters of the state of Washington uh, to corporate ag. Um, the, the impact wasn't readily apparent his interpretation came in 2005, but it wasn't until 2008 uh, when the family farmers, uh, Scott and Jeannie Collins, Randy Jones, the Herons, and others, suddenly uh, became aware of what was proposed. 
Why this is significant is because the water uh, in the gr un underground uh, is ancient water. Uh, this water is probably 10,000 years old, 20,000 years old. Um, and uh, there are aquifers, groundwaters in the area that are in real trouble. Uh, just to the north, uh, th there are groundwaters in a place called the Odessa subarea, where the groundwaters are dropping, you know, up to 10 feet per year. Uh, and the state knew this, uh, and yet uh, the state uh, has uh, condoned the mining of these aquifers, uh, even at, as the state government uh, has now open the door uh, to further pumping of, of these ancient waters uh, in, these, in these deep aquifers. So the, the farmers turn to uh, the institutions of state government uh, and, and sought uh, protection. And really, at, at every turn, uh, the institutions have let them down. Um, certainly, uh, the, the Attorney General, uh, in his interpretation of the comma, uh, dealt a real blow to these farmers. Um, but when the farmers turned to the court system um, and to the, the regulatory agency, the Washington Department of Ecology, uh, they have been, um, they have had bad decisions <clears throat> at every turn. So, for example, the Washington Department of Ecology uh, has looked the other way at the, at the permitting uh, for this uh, large cattle feedlot. So, we have this massive feedlot for 30,000 head of cattle. And, uh, and th there is no effort to look at cumulative effects from uh, other uh, operations in the area. There's, I mean, you, in the filming of the comma, um, we were out uh, near the feedlot, and uh, the stench is uh, is really quite uh, quite incredible. Uh, if if we could produce scratch and sniff movies uh, and allow the, uh, the audience to to really get a flavor. For how awful it is, um, it it would uh, it would be impressive. It's the stench that these family farmers uh, have to endure uh, nearly every day. Um, but the state really looked the other way um, and encouraged uh, this large corporate feedlot uh, to go in. So um, beginning in. Uh, in late April, early May of 2011, and uh, th through the remainder of the year, um, we filmed uh, a series of, of interviews uh, with uh, the family farmers and also went on site uh, to film the, the feedlot, uh, to film uh, the, the, just the spraying of water just over the cattle. Uh, so you have to picture 30,000 cattle, and then it, and it's, it's out there, it's very dry, it's very hot, and so there's, there's these massive sprinklers that are uh, sprinkling this ancient fossil water uh, over these cattle. The, the water itself comes from a well that's 1,600 feet deep, so it goes down well below the 700-foot level. Um, of, the, of most of the wells of, of these family farmers. And so uh, we, you have this, this kind, of, uh, kind of irrigation system that's going on. In addition, the, the, uh, the operator, the owner, Easter Day Corporation, is also irrigating crops uh, just adjacent to the this uh, these thirty thousand head of cattle, uh, and then 
you know, it was interesting because you know we set up the camera close to the entrance way uh, to the cattle feedlot, um, and you could you could uh, of course the cattle trucks were you know moving in and out, and so we we did a, a series of interviews there with uh, cattle trucks uh, rolling. Not too far away uh, is a, a large slaughterhouse that's owned by Tyson Corporation. And so one of the things that we did is that we also went down to Tyson uh, and we set up the camera there and then filmed as the cattle trucks kind of came down the, the highway and then pulled into the, into the parking lot there at, at Tyson Corporation. So um, in the, by the end of the year, and all of course you have to know that all through this period, the, the challenge of the family farmers to uh, Attorney General McKenna's interpretation uh, of the comma, uh, that challenge is making its way through the court. And so uh, in November, uh, we did a series of interviews uh, with the, the farmers. And by now, um, you know, the farmers know that they're in big trouble. The, the level in, of water in their wells is dropping um, up to, for some, they've noticed that the, the water levels have dropped by 20 feet and the temperature of the water is increasing uh, by 10 degrees, uh, probably because of the upwelling of water way down. This, this water is, is way down underground and so as you pump, uh, you're, you're bringing up uh, other fossil waters and the temperature is going up. So during the interviews, by the end of the year, uh, the farmers knew that they were in trouble and that uh, the system had, had really failed them. Uh, and then uh, just three days before Christmas, uh, four days before Christmas, uh, the Supreme Court uh, in, in keeping with uh, the, this whole series of terrible decisions that has impacted these farmers and, and the groundwaters of the state, the Supreme Court also failed these farmers um, and sided uh, with Rob McKenna uh, in six to three. And the only, perhaps, you know, the only um, uh, silver lining in, in, in that decision was the, um, that three of the justices got it right uh, and they challenged uh, in a minority opinion uh, the, uh, the decision uh, re relating to the comma. It was also interesting because uh, while we were not allowed to film uh, oral argument before the justices, it was interesting because of the number of, of uh, corporate representatives who were in the Supreme Court. Um, certainly they weren't wearing their, their big uh, cowboy hats. Uh, There's certainly a lot of wearing of boots, but they made it very clear uh, to the justices um, that the cattlemen and other corporate interests uh, were very much paying attention uh, to this oral argument. So where are we left today? Um, we're left with telling the story, uh, a very important story, uh, about what's happened to these uh, family farmers uh, because of the interests of corporate ag and the decision by Attorney General Rob McKenna uh, in uh, opening the waters of the state uh, for the absence of the comma. And that's today's program. Thank you for listening. And thank you for caring about water, about the land, and about the future of our communities. It's a feeling that's flowing like a river. Time to swap them dollar signs for dreams. There's a river.